What are acids and bases? Let's jump right in. So the, let's talk about the water molecule. So here we have the word molecule. Now remember, that is the smallest unit of most compounds. And when we say compounds, we mean two or more elements. An atom is the smallest unit of an element. So when we're talking about a molecule, we're talking about two or more elements. So like H2O, a molecule of water. C6H12O6, a molecule of sugar. Now water carries a neutral charge because of the 10 protons and 10 electrons. You have 10 positively, positively charged subatomic particles. You have 10 negatively charged subatomic particles and they cancel each other out. And water is what we call polar and has polarity. It is called polar because the oxygen molecule has eight protons and attracts electrons more strongly than the hydrogen's one proton. Now this results in the oxygen end of water being slightly more negative because it's attracting all those electrons and the hydrogen end slightly more positive because there's only one proton. It's not going to be attracting many electrons. Now together these cancel each other out and results in a neutral charge. Think of it like a south and north pole which is why it's called polar. The charges are unevenly distributed. So let's take a look at a water molecule. So here's one right here. You have two hydrogen atoms and you have one oxygen atom. And here's what we mean when we talk about one slightly positive and one slightly negative. If we look at these hydrogen atoms here, which we've taken this and we've turned it sideways, we see the hydrogen end is more positive and we see the oxygen end is more negative. And this is why it's polar. You have two atoms here on one end the left side in this case being slightly more positive and the right side over here being slightly more negative. Here's another example of a H2O molecule. Now because of their slight positive and negative charge, water can attract other water molecules. And the attraction between a hydrogen atom with a partial positive charge and another atom with a partial negative charge is called a hydrogen bond. Now hydrogen bonds aren't as strong as ionic or covalent bonds. Because water is a polar molecule, it can form multiple hydrogen bonds. And these multiple hydrogen bonds allow water to expand when it freezes. And it's also because of these multiple, multiple hydrogen bonds that can dissolve so many other things. And the property of dissolving many other things is essential in our living cells. Now, cohesion draws water molecules together, which is why water beads up on a flat surface. If you're driving down the road and you may see raindrops hitting your windshield and they start to bead together, they don't just splatter like if you threw food at a car. It just starts to bead up together. When rain hits the leaves, it starts to bead up together. You see all these beads of water. Well, cohesion produces surface tension, which is why some insects and spiders can walk on a pond surface. Cohesion, the water being attracted to one another. Well, what does cohesion mean? Cohesion is an attraction between molecules of the same substance. Water, being attracted to water, being a prime example. Then you have adhesion, an attraction between molecules of different substances. Now you might be saying, hold on a second, hydrogen and oxygen, they're different. So how can it be cohesive? Shouldn't it be, shouldn't it be adhesive? Well, remember, it's an attraction between molecules not atoms. And we can have a molecule H2O. That is cohesion. It's an attraction between molecules, not atoms. Now, adhesion between water and glass, two different substances here, causes water to rise in a graduated cylinder, which is why you must read that graduated cylinder at eye level. Heat capacity. Well, water's heat capacity is very high. Now, when we say heat capacity, we're talking about the amount of heat energy needed to raise its temperature. Now, this is due to the multiple hydrogen bonds. This allows large bodies of water like the oceans or lakes to absorb large amounts of heat with relatively small change in temperature. And the organisms within the water itself, they're protected from drastic temperature changes. You can go out to the beach and it can be beating down. It could be over 110 degrees. That water temperature is not going to raise very much. And that's because of the multiple hydrogen bonds that we talked about that water has. Now, for our cells, water absorbs the heat produced by the cell process, which regulates the temperature of the cell. What in the world does that mean? When our cells are producing energy, a byproduct is heat. Well, water absorbs that heat that our cells give off, produced by the cell process, 
produced by what our cells or absorbs the heat made by our cells and that regulates controls the temperature of the cell keeping it from overheating from getting too hot now solutions and suspensions this should be a review now water is not always pure but often found as a mixture and when we say a mixture we're talking about a material composed of two or more elements so those elements being hydrogen carbon sodium potassium or can also be compounds h2o c6h12o6 so water and sugar and they're physically mixed but they're not chemically combined so sugar and sand salt and pepper earth's atmosphere i can mix sugar and sand they're physically mixed but they're not chemically going to combine i can mix salt and pepper they're physically going to be mixed in but they're not going to chemically combine same thing with the earth's atmosphere which is o3 now there are two types of mixtures that can be made with water solutions and suspensions and going back to Earth's atmosphere when I said O3 we're talking about the ozone layer and we're also talking about the nitrogen the carbon dioxide all those are physically mixed they're not chemically combined so solutions where all the components are evenly distributed for example like salt water all the components are evenly distributed now salt is what we call the solute it's what dissolves in the liquid water is the solvent the substance doing the dissolving, dissolving the salt in this example. Now remember, it is water's polarity that allows it to dissolve both ionic compounds and other polar molecules. Too much solute can allow the solution to become saturated. And we also have suspensions, mixtures of water and non-dissolved material, like sand and water. Sand will not dissolve in the water. That is an example of a suspension. All right, acids, bases, and pH. And yes, that is correct. It is known as pH. Now, water can sometimes split apart to form ions. We have a hydrogen ion that's positively charged and a hydroxide ion, OH negative. Now, this happens about once for every 550 million water molecules. Now, pure water, remember, is still neutral because the hydrogen ions is equal to the hydroxide ions, the H plus and the OH negative charge, and the pH scale, and this is correct, this is how you write pH, lowercase p, capital H. Now the pH scale indicates the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. The scale ranges from 0 to 14, where 0 to 6 is classified as acidic, 8 to 14 is basic, and 7 is neutral. Now for acids, which are 0 to 6, the lower the number, the stronger the acid is. For 8 to 14, the base is the higher the number, the more basic. Now, it is done by factors of 10. So, for example, a substance with a pH of 4 has 10 times more hydrogen ions than a substance with a pH of 5. Now, remember, we said for acids, the lower the number, the stronger the acid. It's not the higher the number. The lower the number, the stronger the acid. Now, hydrogen ions are formed by acids in a solution. And when we say an acid, we mean any compound that forms hydrogen ions in a solution. And hydroxide, OH negative ions, are formed by bases in a solution. And when we say a base, we're talking about any compound that produces hydroxide, OH negative ions in a solution. And buffers. Now, inside our body, the pH fluids of cells must stay between 6.5 and 7.5, very close to the neutral range. Now, if it's higher or lower than 6.5 or 7.5, it affects the chemical reactions inside the cell. Now, controlling the pH, and we're talking about keeping the fluids between 6.5 and 7.5, controlling that pH allows the body to maintain what's called homeostasis, where we're keeping the internal cells or the processes stable. Now, your body uses what is called buffers, which are weak acids or bases that can react with strong acids or bases to prevent sharp, sudden changes in pH. It's kind of like when you're controlling the pH level of a pool. If it's higher than 7.4, they're going to use an acid to bring that number down because a acid is between 0 and 6. If it's lower than 7.4, for example, we're going to use a weak base, which is higher than 7.4, to bring that number back up. Now, to keep the blood at 7.4, the body uses bicarbonate and phosphate ions to try to get it back to 7.4. Buffers dissolved in life's fluids play an important role in maintaining homeostasis in organisms so our body is working like it's supposed to. Just remember that when it's going to be higher than 7.4, we need to bring that number down. Now remember, acids are between 0 and 6. That's going to bring the number from, say, 7.6, 7.7 
down to 7.4. If the number is lower than 7.4, the body is going to use a base, which is 8 to 14, to bring that number back up to 7.4. So if you need a number to go down, you're going to use a buffer, and you're going to use an acid buffer to bring that number down. If you need a number to go up, you're going to use a base buffer, because that's 8 to 14, it's going to bring that number up. If you have any questions, you can always email me or leave a comment, and we'll see you guys next time.